Holy, welcome to the Straw Family Funny Farm, folks. We are doing something or another. I don't know what. I stay confused a lot. Have a Merry Christmas now, guys. Alright, sorry I had to get my coffee. Welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. He's confused. I'm confused. <laughs> Alright, so... It is Thursday. We're really late podcasting. Um, but we're not going to podcast for Christmas, are we? No. Because we've got some things going on that we're fixing to tell you all about. And you'll understand why. So this is kind of a two for two weeks together. Mm -hmm. um, what's coming up and what's happened. And then if anything happens, we'll do an individual... Um, what is it? Video. So let's get started in the... Barn stalls. Do we have anything terrible going on? If I do get cold. Yeah, that. We've got one calf in the barn at night, right? She yep. wears a jacket. Um. There. Now you can see me. Um. Okay. So sorry, I had to exit stage left to go get. Uh, the other thing that's going on is we got stars certificate. It has to be filled out, um, and we'll get him out here, and then she will be ours. It's been one year. December, what is today? The 21st? <gasps> one year tomorrow, right? One year tomorrow, we got Star. So, it's been a wonderful journey. And then, I guess this right here would be in the barn stalls, right? Look at this! Coop made the paper and she's alert. It's a really good picture. It's in color. She went and represented the Straw Family Farm, her and RJ, at the little local parade. They hadn't done a parade in years and they decided to revamp it and try it again and we took part. We sponsored all the candy canes for the kids, for Santa to give away to the kids and we gave candy canes and cards out at the um, Great, right? Yep. Had a lot of fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> Miss Piggy. You want to discuss Miss Piggy? Miss Piggy's a mouser. I'm going to get me a couple plates to eat because I haven't had anything to eat. So you just tell them about Miss Piggy. Miss Piggy's a grade A mouser. I mean grade A. Got her a big old fat mouse the other day. Well, it was Moose that was trying to get it. Well, it was Moose trying to get it, but Pig beat him to the punch. She How come in she? there and got him. Just come flying through the door and boom, 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 boom. Got him. Apparently Explain he... Explain how. Well, every night we let Miss Piggy and we slide her feet to the back of her cage. And she comes barreling through like a freight train just doo -doo 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 -doo, on a mission. And Moose has been after a mouse all day. None we of never us think, saw it. He never saw it. Like he, he just was. acted like he was. We all thought Mom's dog was going crazy. We do that any day, every day, all day. I say, he's sitting right here looking. He's sitting here looking at us, and we're going thinking, crazy. going crazy over something anyways. Pig comes barreling through, jumps in her cage. Next morning, we turn Moose back out, take the pig out. He's going nuts around her cage. I mean, class A nutcase. Go, go, go. Digging at it and everything. Digging at We proceed to move the cage and find a flattened mouse. Apparently, Miss Piggy smashed him. But it was like you saw in cartoons with his like little legs. Yeah, all different <laughs> directions, tail back. Just. It was a big old one. Yep. So. Wasn't as clean as you see on TV though, was it? No. No, we had to clean that up. But. So Miss Piggy's turned into a mouser. Sorry, I haven't eaten anything. We started our day in the stalls, huh? All right, so, anything else going on with the animals? No. They make good summer sausage. The animals don't. Well, something has to make the summer sausage. But not our animals. It's store-bought. Sure. All right, so, moving on. Mending fences. Mm -hmm. What have we been doing? Cleaning stalls. Lots and lots of stalls. What happened, son? Mm -hmm. 
Um, Dad's been overhanging some, so. He's been putting out a lot, and then he tried to tell us that they ate it all. Newsflash, they didn't. Nope. And why are we getting the stalls cleaned out and ready? Because it broke up cold. It's supposed to get cold and yucky. It's supposed to come in. It was supposed to come in actually Thursday, which is today. And it hasn't got here. And now they're saying that tomorrow it will drop and be like 10 or 12 degrees. So, yeah. That's okay though, right? Quit shaking the camera. You like his hat? Isn't it cute? <laughs> He's like, no, it's not. He wouldn't just put it on, so he had to put his cowboy hat on. So he put it on his cowboy hat. Could have put it on your ball cap. <laughs> anyway. Alright. I'm done seeing something. So. In. Many fans is really all we've been doing is cleaning stalls and um, getting ready for the cold front. Uh, in the yarn farm, I took lotion bars, soaps, and all that, and I actually made a delivery, which I think I'm going to start doing it annually. Anybody in the Tulsa area that wants to save shipping and handling, I think the week before Christmas, I'll go up and deliver whatever their orders are. I get to visit friends, all that kind of stuff, so I had a lovely little day Tuesday doing that, right? Alright, so I delivered those. Monday. It was Monday, wasn't it? Okay. Then, um, we have several dates for yarn farm, like learning stuff. Um, January 9th is my gardening class. And Julianne from Dirt Patch Heaven will be our presenter. So, so excited. So, if you're in the area and want to come see her, talk to her. Um, she's probably more exciting than the gardening class. But, hey, it's for free. So, come on up and see us at know what extension office and we'll have plenty of room for everybody uh, just trying to get a head count if you're going you might leave it in the comments below and say hey I'm gonna come up uh, but it's know what County extension office or fairgrounds you can Google either one of those it's like 6 12 or 6 13 Roxy Street know what but anyway and it starts at 6 o'clock it's on a Tuesday which is January 9th um, then looking forward to April, I have a presentation with OHCE. What day did I tell you? And yes, I have my calendars I'm looking because I'm in the middle of switching. So I've got my 2018, but I don't have everything in it yet. Um, at 9 a.m. and at the Asbury Methodist Church in uh, Tulsa, I will be talking about spinning. And then April, that was. April the 3rd, it's a Tuesday, and then April the 7th, we have our open house or grand, our seasonal opening. Costs a dollar to get in, dollar for pony rides, um, 25 cents for cookies to feed all the animals. And this year we will have no country market. What we will have is we're going to turn it and gear it towards kids. We're going to have lots of free activities for them to do old fashioned races and sack races and bean bag tosses and, um, that kind of stuff. So look at that. <laughs> it's a witch hat now. <laughs> Back to Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we have those going on, right? In April. Um, February twenty second is the agritourism and farmers market thing but I don't know if I'm going that to that this year um, I'm going to see if there's anything that I want to do before I go and January I to look at that too January 12th 11th 12th what day is the we'll make a thing I don't know whatever day Sorry, you tell January me to go January 13th the second Saturday of the month January 12th and 13th we leave the 12th and go up and set up that night and then the 13th um, we'll be there all day selling wool and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, anything else? Date-wise? No. February's my birthday. 
Yeah. Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. All right, I think that's all for in the yarn farm. Um, oh, the wounded warrior thing. We don't actually have a date yet. Um, I've got to get some flyers to the wounded warrior guy. Um, we are going to open the farm to anyone who takes part in the wounded warrior project. And they're actually looking at having a little get together up here. We'll let you know that when that is and when to support our military. So, um, right? All right. And there goes my phone. Oh, and it's the extension office. So, RJ, you're going to have to take over. What, what are we on? What's next? Um, we just finished Yarn Farm. What's next? In the farmhouse. Hello? In the farmhouse. Hey, um, there's Bruce. How are you? Well, I let's got my see. Yesterday. In the farmhouse. We got us a dog. Um, part of a bottle of Mountain Dew. A weenie dog. Um, TV's playing some music. Um, let's see here. I have no idea what is going on in the farmhouse. So Mom's been baking a little. Getting ready for Christmas. Um, we're going to have a lot of food for Christmas. So if anybody's hungry, you're more than welcome to come eat. Um, Oh, I love these candy bars. They're the best candy bars ever. If you haven't eaten them, you gotta try them. Mm -hmm. These are the best ever. Alright, thanks. Bye. Oreo Big Crunch Bar. Best candy bar ever. Okay, so. And I basically just wasted time waiting on her to get back. <laughs> the reason I had to take that call was because that was my extension agent tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We shall have this filled out. I will get it mailed back, and she'll be ours. Mm. Yep. Um, with the adoption program, you have to show that you can keep them alive and stuff, and you have to account for them if they don't make it correct. And so um, we, in order to get our certificate, we have to adopt for a year and then turn around and get our certificate, and then we go to training them and doing whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But you stop. You're making the camera. Try to focus and all that stuff. Stop. Singing with Shrek. So, yes, it is. It's a song from Shrek. Anyway, so, all right, we've got all the dates taken care of for stuff, right? <clears throat> all right, so next up is, oh, you fret in the field. Have we done anything in the gardening? Nope. Um, I've got a compost pile up there that I need to spread, but I haven't yet. Um, it is what it is. So, um, it's the only thing I've been doing gardening is we get most of our compost. You need to learn how to grow these. Uh huh. Anyway, um, cocoa beans. So, in the they farmhouse, tree. you forgot in the fields, but we did that. There's really nothing to tell. So, in the farmhouse, tell us about your Tuesday, son. When to practice? How'd that go? Because I got on here and told everybody we were going to podcast Wednesday night. What happened? Tuesday. We had a little mishap. <laughs> we had a little mishap. <laughs> okay, so tell your story because you went to go. Well, you see. The truck we were driving. Okay, he took my truck and trailer to a friend's house. Mm -hmm. Then they used our trailer. Right? Or no, you ended up having too many no, horses. No, we took, we took their truck and trailer. Because they had too many horses. Sometimes they take our tra uh, trailer and his truck, and sometimes it's our truck and their trailer. just depends. But yeah. on this occasion, whose truck and whose trailer did you take? Their truck and trailer. We were driving down the road. There was five horses. Yeah, five Four or horse, five people. Four or five people. Okay. Now, when you say truck, do you mean a Ford F-150 or? A Freightliner. The Freightliner, um, uh, 95 semi. Freightliner. What is it? What was it? We had to look up what was in it. Uh, it's like a Cummins <laughs> 8.3 or something like that. It, it's like a semi. It's not. It's a, it's a semi, but it's but not. But it's a not semi. a commercial semi. No. It's a residential semi for hauling yes. big trailers and such. Yes. There you go. Okay, so she's got on a five-horse slant trailer, and y'all head to where? 
Ma'am. And you took a saddle to get repaired. Yep. Right? Uh -huh. That didn't happen either. Go ahead. We're driving right along. And we get about oh, 45 minutes from that house. And the driver looks at us. And we're all just sitting here chit-chatting. Just, guys, we got a problem. And we all just kind of look around like, what's the problem? Because we just lost all power. <laughs> and so my buddy's sitting in the passenger seat. And he goes... What do you mean? You mean we're just like coasting? She goes, yes, we are just coasting. And he goes, oh. And we're running on the inside lane of like a four lane highway. And we have to go all the way across before we run out of speed. And there's people like flying all around us because we weren't it's, running very fast to begin with. It's Christmas uh, shopping last yep. minute So traffic. we just kind of start drifting over. I mean, cars start moving out of there our way. We just start drifting over with four-way flashers on. And we get off on an exit. We're going about four miles an hour, five miles an hour tops. And we're crawling by the time we get up the exit because our foot's on the floor and we go five miles an hour flat. And so when you start going up, you're just like, mm -mm, Grandma Moses could walk faster than this. And we get it over in a parking lot. And then we realize none of us are mechanics. <laughs> Cause y'all jump out and you're gonna go yeah, fix it, right? Yeah, we jump out and we all start looking at it. And we're like, well, that's the motor. <laughs> Nobody knew what to do. They're like, and uh, somebody called somebody and they said, well, it sounds like your fuel line's clogged. We'll get you a new fuel filter, clean that out, and check it. All right, they ask us for the numbers on it. Well, we find a filter that looks relatively close to it. Give them the numbers. Lo and behold, they get to the automotive shop and they pull it up. That's a coolant filter we gave them numbers on. <laughs> now, keep in mind, the coolant and the fuel filters are not near each other. No, they? one's on one side of the truck, one's on the other. So, we all go, they're like, try the other side of the truck. They're yeah. now standing at the parts store to get the part. And mm -hmm. it's just a friend, you know, so yeah. they go over the other side of the truck and they're all nosing around, right? Yep, we finally find... What's the no. fuel filter look like? Because it doesn't look like the fuel filter off a of bar truck. You know what that looks no, like. No, it looks like a oil filter off of a normal truck. Yes. So All the filters on that thing look like oil filters. And you have build. to figure out which one. Yeah. So, yeah. Scoot over here. Okay, so keep telling. Because that's not the end of the story, is it? No. We well, changed fuel filter on it. Guy gets a fuel filter. And apparently he's a handy mechanic. Which was really handy. But wait, you had to fi fini wait for him to finish dinner? Yeah, he went to eat dinner. So we had to sit in the truck and just wait. And it started raining, so we're just sitting there. No power, no lights, no nothing. Just well, we could have let it... I mean, it it didn't... Like, it would idle and run, but it wouldn't, like... Put your foot to the floor and you'd go, like, five miles an hour. Change fill filter. They get it running again. That's after the mechanic gets here. Yeah, the mechanic gets there. He changes that. And he gets to looking around... And the, like, your foot pedal is connected to a wire. And when you push down on it, it pulls a lever. Well, the little thingy that connects the lever, it's on, like, this little bolt. Well, apparently it had wore out and slid over. So it made it where when you picked up on it, it didn't ever trigger the motor. Like, your pedal is moving, you're pulling your wire, but your little switch isn't moving enough. So what we ended up doing was taking and sliding it over and putting a piece of bailing wire wrapped around it. <laughs> so they're driving in a semi with a piece of bailing wire. They're <laughs> holding it so that we can drive with the accelerator. Now there's five horses on the back. You can't just stop and leave the trailer and go on. I mean, there's just no way, is there? All right. Well, we was trying to... How many trips would it have taken me to come and get everybody and... Probably would have taken two. At least two. Uh... We, uh, there's another truck sitting, because we picked some other people up, and they met us, and he was, one guy was just going to call somebody and have him go get his truck and come and hook up to this trailer and just leave a semi there overnight, because his truck was big enough to pull the trailer back. My truck is not big enough to right. take Right, we are just going to take his truck and go grab the horses and stuff, we'd all just leave a semi there till morning, because that other guy, he wasn't in a big hurry. He was sitting there eating dinner. He said, well, I'll be done in a little bit, and I'll come help you, if you're still sitting there. But then we realized 
he goes, yeah, he goes, my keys are in my pocket. So his buddy's like, well, I'm not going to come up. Get your keys. Go back. Get the truck. And you come back. So that shot that plane in the foot. I can only transport like three horses in my truck. It's just an F-150, yeah. which three horses is 3,000 pounds, correct? Yeah, that's a ton and a half that's minus a ton the trailer. And a half. Minus the trailer. So with my trailer on, I could have gone and got him. It would take me 45 minutes to get there. Well, first, my truck and trailer was at the other house. So I had to go get the car, get the truck and trailer. Then I would have had to drive up there, drive back. And I told him, I said, if you need me to do that, you let me know because I will. I will get everybody home. I can't get, I could probably get that trailer home, just not um, with it loaded. That's the problem. So, it is what it is. What well, trailer's a gooseneck? Oh, well, no, I couldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, the gooseneck I can't. But, I mean, I could if it wasn't, I, I have the torque and the power to pull it home, just not the means if it's a gooseneck, number one. And number two, not with it loaded. Uh, my truck can only do so much. So, yeah, like Eddie's truck or something. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I could have. I could have spent the whole night going there and back, there and back, there and back. Right? Yeah. So, um, okay, so the guy finally gets there. He finally gets there. Gets his belly and wired together. And uh, and you guys decide to do what? Well, we realize we can't make it to the rope we're going to go to. So, everybody, we're all soaking wet because it's pouring down rain at this point. And you go, let's go get something to eat. So we went to Buffalo Wild Wings. Did you turn the truck off when you went in Buffalo? <laughs> no, we were scared we wouldn't get it started, so we just left it running. Trucks, we, my, our horses are all saddled in the trailer thinking we're crazy. And it's pouring that rain, we just the truck at running and going point, and eating. it's eat. been how many hours? We left at five, and we were eating at like nine. So, I mean, we, we got home at like 11. Maybe. So... Alright, so you guys ate and stuff and then put it on home and they yeah. don't drive the semi like fast fast because it's not a commercial semi. You well know. when you put your foot to the floor like going flat you go like maybe 75 most of the time. Yeah. Apparently this little thing's been wearing out for a while. That's why we didn't have so much power. So, but it wasn't noticeable. Noticeable. It right. just was the, chalked up to the fact that oh well, this time I have old. five. Well the truck's getting old but this time I have five horses. Last time I only had three horses. The weight makes a difference on when you're pulling, you know. So, um but you guys got home. Mm -hmm. It was an interesting night, right? Mm -hmm. What did mom do the whole time you were gone? What did I eat? Oh, brownies and fudge. And Reese's peanut butter cups. Not Reese's, just peanut butter cups. Whatever. Those things. Uh -huh. Alright, so yeah, while well, we did the parade, uh, we showed them the picture. Oh, while I was stranded on the side of the road, my mom took the time to run to the liquor store. Yeah. Like, well, I'm at the liquor store, so I can come get the truck. I'm close. <laughs> well, I went and got my Christmas wine. As all of y'all know, I was raised in Germany. Three yeah. bottles of Christmas wine. Okay, so the first one I got is an old standby that my daughter likes, okay, and she is 30 years old, and it's that Cupcake Moscato. I like it, but it's a very sweet dessert type wine, correct? So we got that one, and while I was in there, you know, he had gone to Chris Kringlemacht, and I had wanted some Glühwein. Well, I couldn't find any, couldn't find any, so I asked the lady at the liquor store to order me a good German red wine. And so she said, okay, I will. And I said, all right, I'll be in, you know, a few days before Christmas, blah, blah, blah. Well, while I was in there, she did order a good red wine, but she found something in the back of the liquor store, and she said it had been there a while, so she didn't know. And good thing that wine ages. They don't expire, so that's a good thing. But look at what it was. She says, I think this is what you're talking about. Blue wine. It is. It is a, and I don't know if it's, it says it's made in Germany. I'm going to guess Starling Castle. Um, but anyway, you serve this wine warm like a cider. Um, Germany is notorious for blue wine, or actually Europe is notorious for it. So they don't make apple cider. This is their version, and it's made with red wine, some cloves, some cinnamon, 
um, some orange and some lemon. Yeah, and it varies by region. Some places don't use the lemon, some don't use the orange, some use the peel, some use the fruit. Um, just different ways to make it. Some use whole cloves, some use ground cloves, some use cinnamon sticks, some use cinnamon, you know, it, it just depends. So I've got my glue vine, which when the cold front hits, I am cracking that baby open. But she told me if I liked um, warm wines, while she was ordering, she had she calls a guy that's a wholesaler and she tells him what I asked for and he does his best to find things. So apparently, um, Chaucer's Mead has, which mead is made with honey, okay, so it, it's made with 100% pure honey. Um, home brewers know what mead is, it's more of an ale than it is a wine. Um, but this one is a mead for all seasons and I picked it up because, and obviously it's a white mead. Um, you think? But it has this little packet on it and it says a mead for all seasons, cold or hot, spiced or not. And so I'm going to try it all four ways and they have these little um, packages of spice in there. And when I read what was in the spices, it's pretty much like the glue vine. So it would be a white wine version, but I'm kind of leery. I don't know if I'm going to like it or not because typically white wines are sweeter wines. Red wines, which is what glue vine is made of, is a more robust, flavorful, heavier wine. Yes, it has to do with the grapes. Yes, it has to do with the, the aging and all that. Okay, but just as rule of thumb, most white wines are light, floral, fruity palettes, and red wines are more of a robust, uh, I don't know how to say it. it it's like a, I want to say a peppercorn flavored, but it's not peppercorn. It's just, you know, and there can be some fruity red wines, but for the most part, not really. Not really. Um, so this is flavored like a robust red wine would be, but it's considered flavoring for a white wine. The two just in my mind don't go together. Um, not saying it's not going to be good. I will try it, but we'll see. I, I just don't know that cinnamon and all that is going to go with fruity. You know, I, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to try the uh, Chaucer's Mead first. And then I'll go from there. Um, I'm going to warm it. I'll try it cold first. And then I'll warm me some. Then I'll have some with spice. <laughs> All right. So, anyway. But I am going to try that one. So, I came back the day he was stuck. And thing, I came back with three bottles of wine for Christmas. This one will be cracked open at the first light of um, the cold weather. This one will be cracked open for fun and experimentation. And the other one is Christmas Day for my daughter. It's the only one she'll drink. She'll try these others, but and her husband won't even try the wine. I like a haircut. You do need a haircut. We can start with these sideburns right here. <laughs> He's like, no. So anyway, all right. So hey, tell our last funny story. We went to get groceries. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> he doesn't want me to tell it. Everybody knows I'm blind, so this just confirms it. Okay, so we go to get groceries, and you know I do a huge meal, which if anybody's hungry on Christmas Day, we will be having dinner. Which part of this noon. story are you telling? Are you telling the elf on the shelf, or are you telling the... All of it. Okay. All of it. So, all right, we go to our local discount grocery store, which is Save-A-Lot. Um, it's comparable to kind of like Aldi's. Um, you sack your own groceries, blah, blah, blah. We don't have an Aldi's. It's... 30 minutes. But you don't have to pay a quarter to use a cart. Yeah, you don't have to pay a quarter to use a cart. You don't but they will prosecute you if you take your cart. Yes. It's off there. If you take their cart, they will prosecute you, and there's big signs up, and there's cameras everywhere. Everybody takes so. their shopping carts. All the time. Um, I don't think but anyway, gets prosecuted. A can of corn is like, what, 30 cents? No, it's 59. It's 59, whatever. It's cheaper, okay? It's a big no, bulk store. No, they you're just right. put the it is closer in. to 30, because you can get like three for a dollar. Yeah. So, anyway, um, they have a bunch of deals at Christmas, and we do a... a and these people are going to think I never use a glass. I know. Anyway, so... Less dishes. 30 minutes. Come on, let's get this done now. They're going to lose interest in you drinking. Nobody wants to see you drink pop anyway. Um, anyway, 
Well, here, we'll just start with this. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm like wine. Um, okay, so, he, um, we go in, and they have this competition every Christmas, and it's called Elf on the Shelf. So, it, they actually have the elf, and they move it throughout the store. And if you can find the elf, what do you get? A handful of zeros. <laughs> get two zeros. So, RJ and I are, are shopping, and he has done it since he was little. He's like, I'm going to find the elf on the shelf. I'm going to find the elf on the shelf. So, he's going through, and I mean, by the end of the store, he's like, I can't find the elf. I can't find the elf on the shelf. <laughs> and, uh... The boys are giving me hints. They are, because they know him. I mean, it's local, small. Most of the girls there know him. The lady that runs the register has been there like... 30 years. Almost 30 years. She's been there forever. Here we go on the camera. Um, so, anyway, he's going... And the one lady looks at him, and she says, You know what? I'm done giving you hints. You're almost an adult. I'm not giving you any more hints. So he's like, but really, I've been from top to bottom. So I look up. I heard she says, I'll give you one hint this year. Think like a little kid. She said, you're you're not thinking like a little kid. And he goes, okay. So it's below my belt. He says, it has to be short. It has to be below the belt. Um, so we're making our rounds. He stops, and there were some bagels on sale. And I like to buy the reduced for quick sale, and I can put them in the freezer. Um, we just make sure that they're not too, a lot of times it's like one or two days out of date. So I get them and I put them in the freezer and they're fine. Um, but I get a thing of bagels for like, what, a buck 39 or something for six bagels. That's not bad. Um, and then what did you find over when you went to pick up my bagels? Cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. rolls. So as he's handing me these cinnamon rolls, I look over and I just start grinning. And uh, RJ is like, what's so funny? And I said, nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I could not um, quit grinning. This is my second time on this rack. Yeah, because he got the bagels first, and then we went. I sent him to go get something else I'd forgot. I had my Christmas list, so I was like, oh, but I don't have any of this. And I'm terrible about, I'll write down our menu, but I don't write down ingredients. I know most of the ingredients, so if I skip something, we're not meant to have it. Um, if I did it by ingredients, I'd have this big long list, and I'm not going to do that. So, um, anyway, he brings me these cinnamon rolls, and he goes, they're reduced for quick sale. And I said, yeah, you can cut them, you know, have them, freeze them by the, the meal, you know, two together or whatever. And he's like, oh, they won't last that long. I'll just eat them all. I said, okay. I said, well, did you want another package? And I pointed over there, and that's when I saw, what did I see? The elf on the shelf. RJ is still oblivious. So I I've almost touched this elf and I still haven't seen he him. He is right beside the cinnamon rolls. And he's just, what, two foot from the bagels? Not on this even. little rack? Not like even. Six inches. So I just start grinning. And RJ can read. He knows me well enough to know. He's like, what's so funny? Well, it's the elf. He's somewhere. I start looking. And, sure and he enough. goes, it has to be the elf. And I'm like, I'm not going to say a word. Say a word. Not gonna say a word. And he goes, "Where?" And he turns around and looks over, and there's the elf on the shelf, like right there. And he's like, "If it had been a snake, it would have bit me." Well, then we get up to the cash register, and, and I told mom because I couldn't find. It, I said, "I'm just gonna tell him I found it." Say all of them I was looking for. I was telling him I found it, and then. And I said that wasn't fair. That I said I can just that. wing it through there. I said I just say, "Oh, he's over there." And uh, mom goes, you can't do that. Well, sure enough, Not we get this, of Christmas. We get to this checker, and I said, I found the elf on the shelf. She hands me again. She goes, where's he at? I just got here. I went, oh, he's over there. And I looked at mom, and she's like, oh, okay. And said, call just out. And he says, I so could have gotten away with that. Well, he starts putting stuff. He gets his little candy, his tootsie roll. And he puts them in his pocket, you know, and... They've all known him for years, so it anyway. So he starts putting stuff on the conveyor belt and she is opening her thing doing so that she can check us out. And this man walks up behind me and he's 
got to be in his 60s or 70s. He, he's definitely an older gentleman. He has this big package of uh, corn tortillas or, or flour tortillas. I, I'm not sure which. And a couple of cans of like beans or refried beans or something. And I looked at him and I said, oh, take that ahead. You don't want to sit here and wait on us. Because I had like all the Christmas stuff and our two weeks. I only shop every two weeks for our groceries. Sometimes once a month if I think I can push it. <laughs> I hate grocery shopping. Um, so... I tell him to go ahead, and the man looks at me and he goes, yeah, but I don't want to make your husband mad. And I looked up and I said, well, my husband's at work, so he won't care, but my son, just push him out of the way. We don't, you know, what he wants doesn't really count, does it? And the old man looks at RJ and RJ goes, now wait a minute, does that mean I look old or she looks young? The old man looks at RJ and he says, son, you're young and you can whoop my beep he says and i'm old and i know better than discuss age with that woman with a woman he says i'm going in front and i'm getting out of this store <laughs> and so rj was just standing there dumb out he would not answer rj you wouldn't answer mom in and i didn't ask you did i, I just started laughing because he's like you can kick my beep and but he didn't say beep, did he? No. He's like, you're young, you can whoop me, and, and I'm old, and I know better than discuss age with a woman. And he ducked in front of <laughs> us, and he was out the door. We all heard Merry Christmas after him. Huh? It was hilarious. So, we had fun, though. And that was just grocery shopping. Always an adventure with RJ. So, all right. Anything else I've been working on other than that stuff going on just little things we're cleaning up the house today a lot of baking I'm gonna get some baking done um, I had to put everything on hold to go clean stalls because it was way out of control was it not yeah, it was getting there it was getting there um, but other than that I think we're good January 9th don't forget January 9th April 3rd April 7th right We have another little thing, but it's probably going to happen next week. So do we put it in this week's or next week's? Well, because we're not going to podcast next week. I have to get my phone wherever it's it? at. New arrivals. Oh. Ah. Yeah. We'll put them in when we get them. Okay. We may have some new arrivals, and we'll explain the story when we get them. Um, just because. Right. It's supposed to happen before New Year's if everything is on track. So, and we'll see how it goes. Right? All right. So, we will see you all on the flip side. Remember, this next Saturday, we're not going to podcast. You guys have an awesome, awesome Christmas. The farm is open to anybody. Noon is the meal on Christmas Day. You want to come? We'll have a turkey, ham, deviled eggs, uh, potatoes, gravy. But you're not coming on a diet. Don't be on a diet when you come here. We've already got brownies. Uh, I made my first hard candies. Um, we've got cookies galore. That actually galore. turned out hard. <laughs> yeah, that actually turned out hard. We've got fudge. Um, we've got brownies. I'm getting ready to make banana bread and orange cranberry bread. I'm going to dip some pretzels. We've got pies galore that we're going to make. Um, and, oh, the Christmas Eve thing. If you are in Tulsa on Christmas Eve, it is at... We will be with the animals, and it's called Symbols of the Season. It will be from 9.30 to 11 a.m. on December 24th, that Sunday morning. And it will be at 3515 South Harvard Avenue. Okay, so come by. It's a come and go thing, and you can come see the animals. Just see how the symbols of Christmas unfolds down there. This is their first shoot to do it. They have big expectations, and we are going to take part, correct? Yep. All right. So we will see you guys later. Merry Christmas. Don't look for a podcast next week, but we will video different times during the day or during the week, right? Nap time. Nap time. All right. Nap time. We will see you all later. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Bye, guys. Merry Christmas. Ready? Say it. One, two, three.
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And you couldn't say it with me? Well, no, that'd be like what they're expecting. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye-bye.